Welcome back, Netrunners. My name is Sean, and today I'll be covering the game jacking and hacking that took place during the Cyberpunk 2077 QLED Go to ARG. Every effort has been made to provide you with an accurate retelling of the events. My goal is to present the information from a completely neutral standpoint. I am not interested in any discussion or interpretation of the contest rules or whether or not certain actions were ethical. To this end, I submit for your consideration the definitions that I used to classify the following events. Hacking, the act of gaining access to a computer, system, or information by legal, unauthorized, or otherwise unintended means. Game jacking, the act of knowingly creating and or sharing misleading content or information as though it were canon with an ARG. Lastly, before we begin, I would like to give credit to the individuals who made this video possible. Unfortunately, I cannot name them, but they know who they are. The first incident we will be discussing involves a private group of individuals who simply had the goal of making it into the semifinals. These people, who will be shown with fake names and profile pictures, wanted to make sure that the efforts they put into solving clues wouldn't be stolen by lurkers in the r slash ARG Discord server. Thus, they formed a private group with the hope that they could solve the puzzles before the public server and secure their spots in the semifinals. Depending on the day, the group contained anywhere between 5 and 9 people and was led by an individual I'm going to call Panda. The first noteworthy action of this group would occur on October 29th. On this day, the second 7-zip, also known as the second package, would be released. The clues that would lead to the password for this file would not be released until the following day, but this group was not interested in waiting and decided to try to crack the password to improve their odds of making it into the semifinals. A user I'll call Otter decided to try out a password cracking service to get the password and the file contents early. The service cracked the password in two hours and a payment of $50 was required to get the password from the service. This was paid by Crab. Panda confirmed that the request was correct and it was shared with the group members via individual DMs upon request. The group decided to keep the password a secret and further decided that if the contents of the second package led to a submission form, that they would wait until the next clue was revealed to avoid suspicion. Fast forward to the 30th and the group is frustrated as the password was leaked to the public group and they gained nothing from their lead. The password would further become public knowledge with the release of the next clues. The contents of the second package would lead to another time gate the YouTube live stream, which was an additional source of frustration for Panda's group. At this point, Snake starts floating the idea of making a fake ARG to lure people away from the real clues. Crab suggests that a fake website is the way to go, and Snake proposes corpo-comp1-rgba.com. Crab proposes nhx-0.net to play off the text that appears in the hideandseek.jpg image, and Snake goes ahead and registers the domain for $12. Despite contributing a lot of ideas for the fake site, Crab wants everyone to know that they don't condone gamejacking. Snake, Crab, and Turtle bounce ideas off each other for a couple hours before the fake site is finalized. NHX-0.net features an elaborate sequence of puzzles that leads to a cipher that cannot be solved. After the site goes live, Crab wants to make sure that everyone knows not to spill the beans on the fake site. Moving forward to November 1st when the fake site is shared in public groups. Some of the details here are a little fuzzy since these people were caught and a number of their posts have been deleted. The first mention of the fake site that I can find comes from a user I'll call Hamster, who claims to have found it by plugging in URLs. Hamster was not in Panda's group and I do not know if they were aware that the site was fake at this point. I think it is likely the site was also shared on Instagram and Reddit, but I can't find any surviving evidence to support this. A number of Discord users are immediately suspicious of the site, particularly its registration date. Snake attempts to counter this by proposing that the domain was registered by a different department, then makes claims of the company throwing the puzzle together at the last minute. Snake further tries to get people to take the bait by posting the password to the 7-zip and sharing a screenshot of its contents. Now I need to introduce an individual who I'll call Walrus. This person is relevant because they are the core figure in the next incident we'll be covering. For now you just need to know that they did some hacking and are not affiliated with Panda's group. Back to the topic at hand. Walrus publicly claims that the NHX-0 site is illegitimate. Snake in turn calls Walrus's trustworthiness into question, you'll see why later, and Walrus responds with, sure, but I'm not trying to get people to download files, essentially calling out Snake as the source of the hoax site. Snake attempts to save face by claiming that if the site is fake, someone spent too much time on it just to get disqualified. Shortly after this, the YouTube live stream starts and people lose interest in the fake site. 40 minutes later, r slash ARG server mods would declare the fake site to be a game jacking attempt, and the individuals involved were banned from the server and none of them made it into the finals. Remember Walrus from like a minute ago? Well this is all about them. 
They joined the r slash ARG server on November 1st, and the first thing they did was post some other domain names that were registered for the ARG. I should note, these domains are also found by Pandas Group, and were ultimately never used in the ARG. Walrus stated that the domains had been posted anywhere yet, and they weren't live. Walrus expressed doubts that leaking the domains would have any effect on the contest, and goes on to say that they were most likely disqualified due to the methods they used to acquire these domains. When further questioned, Walrus revealed that they used impersonation to get themselves CC'd on an email chain from the contest developers. Walrus would also post a long binary message, which translated to a base64 encoded message, which reads, NCPD is close, AV9 decoy, hide in forest. Walrus claimed that this was an inactive hint, but it never appeared in the actual contest. Walrus further states that they didn't hack anything, but from an objective standpoint, I disagree, as social engineering is widely considered a form of hacking, and it fits the definition I stated earlier. In the end, none of the leaks provided by Walrus would be relevant to the ARG. Following the first Twitch livestream on November 4th, a number of individuals decided to attempt to find the remaining 8 URLs before the second stream. It was discovered that the first 7 URLs were all registered on the same day. Using the domain registration list for October 22nd, which contained nearly 150,000 URLs by the way, a number of people were able to find the remaining URLs. The first person to publicly suggest this was none other than Walrus, who made the suggestion 1 hour and 28 minutes after the first livestream ended. Seven hours later, an individual who I'll call Parrot would claim to have found all eight URLs. Parrot would even post one of the eight as proof. This message would later be edited to partially obfuscate the URL. After this, a discussion of ethics would ensue with a debate on if this should be considered hacking or not. A number of other users would also announce that they had found the URLs over the next few days. As a quick aside, while the domain registration lists are public information, this is an attempt to gain access to information by unintended means which means it is hacking by the definition we are using, as this is clearly not how the ARG designers intended for the domains to be found. Following the reveal from Parrot, a user known as Arduino would verify the claim that the URLs could be found using the domain list. When he found the claims to be legitimate, he reached out to Creative Zing, the company administering the contest. He spoke on the phone to someone named Mike, who was initially skeptical that the contest had been compromised, but after Arduino shared a few of the URLs, he was convinced. This would lead to the delay of the second stream, the stream with the scrolling domain list, and the redesign of the puzzles leading to the final 8 URLs as detailed in my last video. And that's everything there is to know about the game jacking and hacking that went on during the Cyberpunk 2077 QLED code ARG. I hope you enjoyed, if you did leave a like, but remember don't subscribe. If you did, it'd be too easy to find any future videos I make. What? You didn't think there'd be future videos? QLED code might be over, but that doesn't mean there aren't more ARGs to solve. But like I said, you don't want to see those, so don't subscribe. Until next time.